This was not my best week ever, and I will explain why in just a moment, as well as share what items did sell for me. Won't nobody love you the way they should. Won't nobody check up on you, make sure you're good. Won't nobody check those body tendons by your neck. All hey everyone, really my name is Becky Park, and I am a part-time reseller on Poshmark and eBay, as well as Mercari. And on this channel, you can expect to find these kinds of what sold videos, in which I share what kinds of items I'm selling, how much I'm picking those items up for, how long I hold on to them, and probably most importantly and what you're most interested in is how much profit I'm making off of each of those items. And I also do thrift hauls. I provide lots of videos with tips and tricks on how to grow your own reselling business, especially from the perspective of a part-time reseller. I'm also a mom to two very little and busy kids and I have a full-time job as a high school choir teacher. So if that sounds interesting to you and you're not subscribed yet, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. And if you enjoy this video, make sure that you consider giving it a big thumbs up and liking it as well well. So let's talk about why this wasn't my greatest week ever. A lot of you know, but I started on eBay not too long ago. I started selling seriously on eBay, I want to say this past summer. And so I'm still learning a lot of the kinds of do's and don'ts of eBay. And this week I definitely experienced a don't and got a Vero for it. So if you don't know what a Vero is, it's basically eBay's way of kind of making sure that you're not infringing on anyone else's copyright or I don't know, like just doing things that you're not supposed to do. I know that there's like a few different ways that you can be Vero'd and the thing that I did was I used a stock photo for a couple of my listings from White House Black Market. White House Black Market is owned by Chico's, if you know that company, they also have like their own store. But Chico's is pretty big on people not using their stock photos. I actually remember even over on Poshmark, maybe like a year ago, um, I got a letter from Poshmark even, like in my email saying that a couple of my listings were gonna be taken down because I had used stock photos from, I think it was Chico's pieces that time, it wasn't White House Black Market. So they found me on eBay as well, and they took down those two listings, and they said that they were going to hide all of the items in my store from search for three days. So you'll see, I went through a three day dry spell on eBay, and I'm pretty sure that that's because they were hiding all of my items from search for three days. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm one of those people like when I have to sign a contract or when you know you update something like software or something on your computer and they say, do you agree to all the terms and conditions? I'm not the type of person that reads all of those terms and conditions. I should be, I should be much more responsible. So I've never actually read the eBay user agreement handbook or guidelines, whatever you wanna call it. I've never actually sat down and read it. I probably should, and I think I knew in the back of my mind too, like we're not supposed to use stock photos, and the reason for that is because they are not our photos. We did not find those models, we did not take the time to do hair and makeup and take those pictures. I mean, those are copyrighted by those brands and those companies, and for a good reason. They had to spend a lot of money to make those pictures happen, and I completely understand why. I also understand why resellers use stock photos when they can find them, because there are some garments that it's just a lot easier to see what it looks like like when it's on an actual human being and it helps items sell better sometimes not all the time but sometimes and typically speaking I don't use that many stock photos I will if I can find them but I won't go out of my way to spend a lot of time to look for stock photos so if you were to go through my eBay store or Poshmark closet you would see that while there are some stock photos there generally speaking I like to use my own photos I also don't like to model items on myself for a couple of reasons one because it takes a lot of time and two, because I'm really small, I'm like five feet tall, I wear like a size zero or extra small in most things. And so there aren't even a lot of items that I have to resell that are in my size and would look good on my frame. All of that being said, I've definitely learned my lesson and on eBay especially, I'm gonna be taking down my stock photos or putting them like maybe as the last picture just so if people wanna reference them, they can, but that's not the picture that I'm using to sell my item, if that makes sense. I'm not here to tell you what you should and shouldn't do for reselling, but I am here to tell you that there are companies who are actively looking at eBay stores and even on Poshmark to see who's using stock photos and people are being punished for it as I was. So, you know, I want to just make sure that I am teaching you about the things that I'm going through as I go through my own reselling journey and just kind of sharing what things have worked and what things are not working. And I'm just here to tell you it's not worth it to use stock photos if you're going to be 
penalized that heavily. So that's the lesson that I learned this week. And as a result, I, you know, just didn't make as many eBay sales as I typically have been making. And it's my own fault. So we're going to learn from that. We're going to move forward. I haven't been able to find the time yet to go through all of my eBay listings and, you know, take down stock photos or move them to like the seventh or eighth picture in my eBay listing, but I am going to do that because I don't want that to ever happen again. And I think that if you get Vero'd enough times on eBay, they will suspend your account, they'll shut it down because you're showing them that you're not a trustworthy seller and I don't want that to happen to me. I am at the moment top rated and I wanna hold on to that top rated status because as you kind of climb the ranks, you are pushed out in SEO a little bit more and eBay promotes your listings a little bit more and I wanna make sure that eBay's working for me as much as I can get them to. So now that we've talked about kind of the not so fun stuff that happened to me, let's talk about what actually did sell. It was a pretty decent week, all things considered, so let's get right into it. On Monday, November 18th, I sold over on Poshmark this pair of Torrid High Rise Skinny Jeans in a size 20. I think that this was my very first time trying out Torrid jeans, and although they did get a lot of attention, no one wanted to pay more than $20 for these, so I did let them go for $20, and I made $16 on those. Next, on Monday the 18th, I sold over on eBay this Janie and Jack unisex 100% wool cream cable knit sweater. It was in a size 2T, T standing for toddler, and it was adorable. Like, it was just so cute. And I'm trying to think of where I got it. I want to say I got it at the bins the last time I went to Indianapolis. And despite it being, you know, in those big blue bins, they, it was in perfect condition. And there wasn't a single stain or spot on it. And I could just imagine like a little toddler wearing this for holiday photos or for like a Christmas card or something. Just so cute. And I said it was unisex because I could see a guy or a girl wearing it. I have a two-year-old myself, but like he hates wearing sweaters, so I just went ahead and listed it. I had it listed for, I wanna say $24, but pretty quickly I got an offer for it for $18. I really only had it listed for like a few days, so I went ahead and sold it for $18. The buyer paid $4 for shipping. It only cost $3.96 to ship. It did sell via promoted listings, so I made $14.96 on that, which is pretty good for a children's item. I mean, you know, even Janie and Jack doesn't really go for that much, but I think this was just like the perfect item for the perfect time, and so it was able to move for $18. And that got a lot of attention on eBay, Poshmark, and Mercari, so I was happy to move it for $18. On Tuesday, November 19th, I sold this vintage Fieldmaster snowflake print sweater in a size extra large. This was a men's sweater and I did get it at a Goodwill um, last year. I got it, you know, kind of a while ago, but I did get it kind of at the end of the winter, so I'm not surprised that I had to hold on to it for as long as I did. It did end up having like a pretty sizable hole in the seam right by the shoulder, so I let it go for $15 on Poshmark and I made $12 on that sweater. I would still pick up these kind of like old grandpa-ish sweaters, you know, they're vintage, they're usually like 100% cotton. I would still pick up this style again, but I think again it had a hole in it, so I think that's why I ended up holding on to it for longer than I wanted to. And then the last thing that sold on Poshmark on the 19th was this Chicago Cubs Christmas Santa t-shirt in a size 2XL. It was just like a short sleeve t-shirt and I think it was just by... Gildan? Maybe it was Nike. I don't remember what the brand of the t-shirt was, but two unique things about it. One, it was a Chicago Cubs shirt, and two, it had like a Christmas theme to it. And I did share in this video about how to make as much money as you can during quarter four as a reseller that I will link right here. One of the tips that I had was to carry items that were kind of specialty items, so like a lot of sports or college or, you know, those types of items, because people are shopping for those kinds of things for their loved ones for Christmas. So, you know, a lot of times people are not looking to buy used items for the holidays as gifts, but if it is a more unique item, so if you have like a Cubs lover in your family, something like this, even though it's used, I think someone would still enjoy receiving as a gift. So if you are able to come across that kind of stuff, I would, personally recommend picking it up. I had it listed for $24. It sold for my full asking price. So I made $19.20 on that item. And then on eBay, I only had one sale and it was this Abercrombie & Fitch Muscle Fit Red 
Fair Isle lightweight sweater in a size large. I had it listed, I want to say for like $27.99, but I think I sent out offers to watchers on it for $24.99, and it sold with free shipping. I ended up paying $3.96 for shipping. It also sold via promoted listings. I promote all of my eBay listings at 1%, and so I ended up making $17.53 off of that sweater, and that sweater I picked up at the Goodwill bins, so I probably ended up only paying like less than a dollar for it. I remember in middle school, Abercrombie was like the brand. Like everyone wanted to wear Abercrombie everything. I personally could not afford a single thing in that store. And although I feel like the hype has definitely died down, it's not what it used to be, there is still a following for Abercrombie, especially overseas. Like Abercrombie is actually pretty huge over in Asia. And so whenever I find Abercrombie and if it's in good condition and it's something that is still trendy and whatnot, I will still pick it up. I think there's a little like middle school piece of me that's like Abercrombie. And so I'll pick it up. But also people are still looking for it and buying it. And you know, I'm able to make good money off of it, so I will continue to pick it up. On Wednesday the 20th, this is when my eBay dry spell hit. Again, I had three days of no sales over on eBay, probably because they were hiding all of my items from search, but I did have a few sales over on Poshmark. So the first thing that sold was this Banana Republic Factory two button blazer in this like gray color with like a really faint grid pattern on it. It sold for $20, so I made $16 off of that. That was an item that I got for free. I don't really pick up blazers very often. Like I don't really generally go through the blazer section I feel like at Goodwills and whatnot when I'm given them for free I will list them and they do okay I mean blazers for me are not quick flips by any means I tend to sit on them for quite some time and when they do finally move it's for decent money but you know nothing super exciting the next thing that sold is something that I have had for a while but I was happy to finally move it and it was this pair of anthropology pilcrow and the letter press patchwork chinos they were really cool they were in this like olive green color but then there were just like all these patches that were embroidered onto the pants both on the front and the back and I was a little confused by these because on the patches like there were parts that seemed like maybe they were flawed like maybe they'd gone through the wash and they were coming undone or there were just like pieces of it missing part of me feels like that's what they were supposed to look like according to the stock photos and then also there were like a couple pen marks on them the crazy thing is I have a friend on Instagram. Her Instagram handle is Seattle Gracie, and I will put that right here. But I think that I did like a live haul of these pants, and I did it when I had gone to this conference with my students. So I wasn't thrifting in my own town, I was thrifting maybe like an hour and a half away, or just like an hour away. And after my live haul on Instagram, my friend contacted me and she was like, do you know what? She's like, I think those pants used to be mine and maybe I sold them via Poshmark or something. She was like, I don't know how, but they ended up in your area and she's like, I think that they're mine because I had those same exact pair of pants, those are my size, and I had gotten pen on my pants too in the exact spots that you're talking about which would be so crazy, like it's such a small world. But anyway, I had them listed originally for $58, but I sent out offers to likers on them for $40, and after discounted shipping, I made $30.20 off of those pants. I have had them for like at least a year, if not a little bit longer, so, you know, probably I did have them priced too high, and I probably could have afforded to cross-list them, but at the end of the day, they sold for $40, so I'm happy with that. The last thing to sell on Wednesday the 20th was a sweater that my husband found, and it was by Oscar de la Renta, and it was this gray sweater with like a fleece collar, and it was in a size medium, and it was, I think, a quarter zip, it was um, like a pullover. Someone sent me an offer for $25, so I made $20 on that sale. Again, my husband found it at a Goodwill, and I feel like we find a decent number of Oscar de la Renta pieces here in my town. You know, I'm so used to thinking that Oscar de la Renta is this like really prestigious, high lux name. And part of that is because my best friend's older sister, she went to college at the Parsons School of Design. And right after graduating, she actually got a job with Oscar de la Renta. He had created a position just for her. And, you know, she was like part of the team of making like couture pieces. And I think eventually she moved into like knitwear. And then I think she moved into menswear. But what I forget is that Oscar de la Renta also has like a ready to wear line, both for women and men. And they're sold at like 
like Macy's and stuff and they're just not worth as much as obviously like their gowns and stuff so Oscar de la Renta while it can be worth a lot of money it's not all worth a lot of money so $25 for this I was happy with that on Thursday the 21st I had a bundle on Poshmark and this sold to a viewer named Catherine. Catherine, thank you so much for watching my channel and for supporting me through buying stuff in my Poshmark closet. I appreciate you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you and I hope you loved everything. But she bought these two pieces, the first being this H&M high-low cropped sweater in like this bluish lavenderish color and it had like a twinge of gray in it I really couldn't tell what color it was but it was in a size small I did have it in my four for $25 sale and that was something that I purchased from a former student of mine in like kind of this big lot and then I also sold to her this anthropology plenty by Tracy Reese orange embroidered skirt in a size zero and it was this beautiful like a-line skirt and perfect for the fall I mean with like the colors it was like orange and brown and just gorgeous and like I said perfect for the season that we're in right now and she put both of those items in a bundle I believe and I sent her an offer for $30 with discounted shipping so I ended up making $22.20 on those items the skirt I had picked up pretty recently out of Goodwill it was right next to this other anthropology skirt in the skirt section of Goodwill and I don't really look through the skirt section very often because skirts don't often have a very high return but they were kind of just like at the end of the rack and I saw the Plenty by Tracy Reese one and it was so cute so I just snatched it up and this brand Plenty by Tracy Reese is not always sold at Anthropology, but when I was looking it up online and looking for stock photos I saw that this piece in fact was sold at Anthropology, and I think that the Anthropology Plenty by Tracy Reese pieces do better than just the Plenty by Tracy Reese So I was happy to send those two off to Catherine, and I hope that she loves them I did have a sale over on Mercari. It was something that I had listed for probably like 24 hours. And it was this pair of jeans by BKE Denim. BKE is the buckle like house brand. And it was the Stella bootcut jeans in a size 26. They didn't have like the really fancy schmancy embroidery or like bedazzling that happens on a lot of their jeans on the back pocket. But regardless, someone sent me an offer for $28. I did have them listed with free shipping and they did fit in a padded flat rate envelope through USPS. So I did have to pay $7.55 to ship those out to her, but I did end up making $17.65 off of those. They were given to me for free by my friend Kathy and she sent me like seven bags filled to the brim with just so much stuff. And I guess she used to be a big buckle girl back in the day because there was a lot of like BKE, some rock revival, some miss me, all that kind of stuff. So I am happy to sell it for her and she is letting me keep all the profit mainly because I would like give her daughter free voice lessons back in the day so it's a great exchange I'm all for it so like I said $17.65 and I did not use Mercari shipping to do that I did ship through pirate ship and I have a video on how to do that right here on Friday the 22nd I had a pretty substantial bundle and this again went to a viewer I think her name is Tavora this is her second time buying from me and I will link her Instagram right here and she has a lot of really cool stuff in her Poshmark closet a lot of it she hand makes herself so definitely make sure that you check it out I think she does some jewelry but also like artwork and it's really cool so if you are in need of some home decor and whatnot make sure that you check out her Poshmark closet but she bought this bundle of two items from me and the first item was this Betsy Johnson blue three-fourth sleeve laser cut dress in a size 14 and it had like a really pretty like I said laser cut kind of print to it almost and I believe I picked it up at a Goodwill not too long ago but I have been sitting on that for at least a few months and the second item that she picked up was this new with tags Ivanka Trump black collared coat dress in a size 14 this was something that I got in my via trading box and I will link that unboxing video right here again I think I've shared at least like one or two items that have sold from that box every week and I'm just really thankful that they sent those items to me for me to unbox for you so you could see what kind of items you would get in a Macy's lot but I mean even though it's not stuff that I would typically pick up at a Goodwill or something especially if used these items when new with tags they will sell so this was a really cool dress it was 
really heavy duty, had like really great substantial buttons on the front, collared and in a nice classic black color. So both of those items, they sent her an offer for $60 on those with discounted shipping. And so I made $46.20. So thank you so much again for your support. She also is so great about sharing items from my Poshmark closet almost on a daily basis. And I'm just so thankful for her. On Friday, I also sold this pair of Theory Max C Connection Park Gray slash like faded black <laughs> corduroy pants in a size two. There are times when I will get clothes home and it's so hard to tell what color they are. Like it really depends on the light and there's not really a right or wrong, but it's just kind of based on, again, like the lighting that you're in that day. So I don't know, like she messaged me because she was like, in the listing you called them gray, but then when you selected a color for the listing itself in Poshmark, you selected black, which is it? And I was like, well, let me go look again. And it really could be considered like a faded black, gray. In some lights, it could even be considered brown. Like, I don't know. It's so hard to tell sometimes. So hopefully she's okay with whatever color she interprets them as. But they did sell for $25 with discounted shipping because I sent her an offer. So I made $18.20 on those. And the last thing to sell on Friday the 22nd was this pair of Sun Steps hand-woven Hirachi slip-on shoes in a size 10. These just looked really cool. They were at my student's garage sale that I talk about all the time. And I saw them and I was like, I, they just look really neat. They were hand woven and they just looked like they were really good quality. When I brought them home and started photographing them, I did realize that there was kind of like a rip on one of the like small panels of leather. So I made sure to take pictures of that and disclose it. And there weren't very many comps for this brand at all. Like I don't think it's a very popular brand or just one that a lot of people know of, but there were some and they were like decent, like $30, $40. I ended up letting these go again because of the flaw for $20 and I made $16 off of those, half of which will go to the theater program at my school and half of which I get to pocket. And also just before I forget, the Cubs shirt that I talked about, um, you know, from a few days ago, that was also from my student's garage sale. On Saturday the 23rd, my dry spell with eBay ended, but I did have a $0 sales day on Poshmark that day, so I only had the one eBay sale, and it was this new with tags Adriana Papel shutter pleat green dress in a size six, and I sold that for $35 with free shipping, and I don't know if it's because I just recently hit top rated, but my shipping rate for the padded flat rate envelope went down. Like I used to have to pay $7.55 through eBay, but now I only have to pay $7.33. So that was really exciting that I have to pay a little less than I used to for the padded flat rate shipping. This dress also sold through promoted listings. So I made $22.77 off of that dress. I do believe I picked it up at a Goodwill not that long ago, but I have had it for quite some time. And this is a dress that I got a lot of lowball offers on. There was one buyer in particular who I don't remember what she sent me an offer of maybe like $20 and she would like offer me the same amount every day for like three or four days in a row and I would just keep sending her my counter offer and so I'm happy to have finally moved it for 35 you know some items I'm willing to let go of for a little bit less but this item because it was new with tags and it was a really beautiful and well-made dress I didn't want to let it go for $20 and I knew that it was worth more so I held my ground and I'm happy that I did because not too long after I did finally sell it for 35 I probably could have sold it for a little bit more but again 35 I was happy with that and then on Sunday the 24th, which is the last day of sales that we're gonna talk about in this video, I did have one sale on Poshmark and it was this J. Jill striped open front chunky cardigan in a size small. I don't remember where I picked this up. I wanna say the bins, but I could be making that up. But this sold for $20 via someone sending me an offer, so I made $16 off of that. J. Jill, it's not my favorite brand to pick up, but I will because it does have a following and if it's unique or, you know, just in really great shape and somewhat substantial, I'll pick it up and, you know, making $16 off of this, not bad. On eBay, I sold this pair of Nike Train Ultra Fast Fly Knit Training Shoes in a size 12. I think I had them listed for $58. Someone messaged me and asked me, hey, how low are you willing to go? And I was like, well, how much do you want to pay for them? And he came back at me with $40, which 
fine. Like I was okay with it. I got those from my student's garage sale as well. It actually belonged to the theater director. So it's not like I paid anything for them. And I want to just move those garage sale pieces out so that I can hurry up and give that money to the theater program at my school. I did already write one check from the items that sold in the first month and a half or so, and I'll probably write another check based off of the items that have been selling since then, maybe like at the end of this month, but I have been making some great sales to contribute to the theater program, so I'm really excited about that. I did have these listed with free shipping, and I thought that I'd be able to fit them in a padded flat rate envelope. Definitely not the case. So I said that I made $27.47 off of these. I probably only ended up making like 25 though because shipping costs a little bit more than I thought it would. They were just really big. Again, they were like a size 12, so there's no way that those were going to fit in a padded flat rate envelope. The next thing that sold was this lot of three NASCAR die cast racing champion cars from the 90s, and they were team caliber. I don't know what that means. I think it probably must have said team caliber on the underside of the cars or something. These were also from my student's garage sale. There was just like a whole box of matchbox cars and hot wheels and stuff like that so i was like hey let's try something new i brought them home and i kind of sorted them out into different lots based off of you know the brand so like hot wheels were a lot or like matchbox cars or in this case this team caliber thing and i kind of grouped them also according to the years that they were made and created these little lots i have not made a lot of money off of them but it was a learning experience and you know it's all free money in the sense that i didn't have to pay anything for it i had these out to auction with a starting bid of two dollars and 99 cents i got the one bid and this is after it was you know a relist of like maybe the third or fourth time so i had them pay for four dollars and 39 cents of shipping it only costs like around three dollars to ship so i ended up making three dollars and four 42 cents off of that half of which will go to theater and half of which will go in my pocket I can get a McDonald's Coke with it I'm happy with that and that was my last sale of the week again not a lot of things sold not like the greatest sales week ever but I'm okay with it today the day that I'm filming this is Wednesday actually so a lot later than I typically film this there has been a lot going on at home I'll talk about all that stuff in my next week's video but tomorrow's Thanksgiving and it's you know the season of giving thanks and I am I'm really thankful for each and every sale I'm especially thankful for viewers like you who choose to visit my Poshmark closet or eBay store and make purchases like you have no idea what that means to me so thank you guys so much for watching these videos for supporting me in the ways that you do I, I really am I'm just so thankful so for the week I sold 13 items on Poshmark for a total of $232 and the numbers that I share with you right now these are the amounts that go into my bank account I've already factored out shipping and fees and all that kind of stuff I have not factored out cost of goods but Generally, they're really low. You heard me talk about how a lot of this stuff I got for free. So you can maybe subtract like $20. I don't know, but I, I haven't subtracted my cost of goods. Everything else has been subtracted. On eBay, I only sold five items. Thanks, Vero. Thanks for, <laughs> it's my fault. I'm not trying to blame eBay, but it was an unfortunate circumstance. So five items sold on eBay. I made $86.15 on eBay. And then one item sold on Mercari. That's been my average for the past two weeks is one item sold on Mercari. And I made $17.65 off of Mercari. That brings us to a total of $335.80 which I'm happy with like that's great for me for part-time it still helps us like be able to do things like go out and eat and plan for vacations and not feel guilty about doing those kinds of things so I'm really happy with that that came out to a total of 12 women's pieces five men's pieces one children's piece in the form of that ridiculously cute sweater from Janie and Jack and one hard good in the form of cars little toy cars <laughs> So all in all, you know, not like the best week ever in my entire life, but I am really thankful for all of those sales. Later this week, I am going to finally put out my SARTHS video. SARTH is an acronym that Josh from the Harry Tornado came up with, and it stands for Support A reseller this holiday season and it's basically just where resellers like myself will share what kinds of items we have in our Poshmark closets or eBay stores 
that people like you could potentially purchase as a gift for someone on your gift list and you can also support a reseller at the same time. So you kill two birds with one stone. I'll put that video out at some point hopefully this week as well as kind of like a wish list of things that I want as a reseller. Things like lighting kits and cameras and things that you know if I had all the money in the world these are the kinds of things that I would buy based off of reviews of other people or just seeing results that other people have been able to have because of having these items. So if you are interested in that content that's coming your way soon, make sure that you hit that notification bell and you will be alerted every time I put out new content. But I believe my daughter and her friend are home, so I'm gonna go hang out with her. We're gonna get ready for Thanksgiving. We have a ton of cleaning and cooking and prepping and all that kind of stuff to do. Let me know what you're doing for Thanksgiving. Are you having it at your place? Are you going somewhere? Are you traveling? Do you not celebrate Thanksgiving? Let me know in the comment section down below. But I hope you have a great week regardless of what you decide to do on Thanksgiving Day, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!